Welcome to Abasiba Sosonet. Uh, today is December 5, 2012. My name is Lina Jin. Uh, it's our great honor to invite Professor Bing Hong Zhang to Abasiba interview. Uh, Professor Zhang is a, a fellow of ITB, uh, Bear Laboratories, and a member of the National Academy of Engineering. He is a currently professor at the Garcia Institute of Technology. Welcome, Professor. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, now, research works on speech processing are very hot topics, and uh, compared with research work in 20 or 30 years before, research method on speech processing and its applications may be quite different. Uh, could you please talk about what are the major differences of current speech processing methods and its applications compared with before? And, uh, what are the most challenges of speech processing research now? Okay, um, it's a good, very good question. Uh, in terms of the change uh, over uh, the past 20, 30 years in the area of speech research, uh, I would say that uh, the key difference is uh, the av availability of data. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, you know, 30 years ago, uh, and before, uh, speech problem or speech research is considered a problem of speech science. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in that sense, you know, uh, uh, speech scientists, linguists and so on, uh, they offer their uh, expertise mm -hmm. uh, in making the observations uh, on what I would call the sanitized mm -hmm. speech data. Uh, you record speech uh, as realized by real people, real talker yeah. in uh, some booth, you know, very quiet conditions yeah. and uh, then the speech scientist or linguist would then uh, make observations and listen to the sound and then jot down the properties and then form some theory. Well, but that's an old-fashioned uh, mm -hmm. uh, methodology. Uh, what is new, uh, study from the 70s and the 80s, people start to record real data. Real data means a speech signal that happened in the real world, not necessarily in sound booth yes. or uh, work control the conditions. And also, the other dimension is that the speech data is being collected from regular people, not necessarily people who are, let's say, uh, announcers or people who are known to make standard speech you know, in any particular language. And, and so in other words, uh, uh, the data now is real and whatever the, uh, the variability that is inherent in everyday speech okay, is going to be properly reflected in the collected data. And so the availability of data is one key driving force that you know caused the change in terms of research methodology. And what comes afterwards because of the availability of data, then so the problem is no longer just a sign I mean a speech science problem. Yeah. Uh, the problem now need to be uh, tackled with uh, uh, a wide variety of tools like mathematical tools, uh, signal processing uh, discipline and, uh, 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 and others like the statistics, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. So, so there will be more tools applied to the research uh, of, uh, of uh, speech uh, of phenomena. And speaking of statistics, okay, uh, sure, okay, uh, in the old days, uh, uh, when speech uh, is treated as speech, speech science, yes, some people did use uh, statistics as a tool. Uh, but the, that kind of you know, tool was really a very simplistic tool. Uh, what happens now is a statistics, or what we call statistical signal modeling, itself becomes a topic of research, meaning how do we build a representation in a statistical sense okay? that will best reflect the variability of speech data. And, and so that is a profound change in terms of the uh, approach to uh, speech science. And if you want to uh, uh, design a system that can handle real
real world speech, uh, for example, speech recognition and so on, then you must uh, be able to uh, build the knowledge about how you know, uh, variable people's speech would uh, have, that would be, yeah. and, and that has to be part of the overall uh, research uh, agenda. And, and so that's a major difference. Uh, so if, if I can summarize, uh, 20, 30 years ago, uh, now speech uh, research is no longer just, you know, the uh, 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 problem of speech science handled by linguists and, 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 and uh, 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 phoneticians. Yes. Now speech uh, research is uh, being uh, uh, handled by a wide variety of people, uh, aside from linguists and phoneticians, you have engineers, you have uh, mathematicians and so on. And with the available data, it creates uh, uh, many, many new uh, results uh, that are way beyond uh, what could be, a, could be a generated by uh, politicians in the English level. So that was a major change. Yeah, exactly. Yes, uh, as you mentioned, uh, recently uh, several big IT companies released their intelligence, personal assistant, and knowledge navigator for the smartphone. For example, the Apple's Siri, Google's Google Now, and Samsung's S Voice. Uh, where do you see the voice search in the future? And uh, could you please talk about the change of the speech recognition and the intelligence transmission in the next 10 years? Uh, I'm very happy to see uh, all these uh, new products uh, on the market uh, 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 that start to make use of uh, uh, speech technology and a uh, certain level of uh, uh, or the appearance of intelligence uh, is there uh, and I think the trend is going to continue. Uh, so as uh, uh, I have reflected in my talk today, our ability to handle uh, intelligence is still very limited. Okay, so the current uh, 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 so-called intelligent agent uh, as realized in product, it, they are just very preliminary, very preliminary. So, as I alluded uh, to uh, in my uh, uh, talk this morning, there are many deeper layers of the realization, for the realization of intelligence. Okay? For example, uh, how do you uh, handle the references? Okay? Uh, right now, uh, it's, uh, it, it's handled like a, like a workflow, a very limited amount of Memories in you know, uh, dedicated to towards the uh, uh, registry of uh, 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 reference. Uh, but then I think in the future, in the next 10 years, we are going to see much expanded uh, capabilities uh, in terms of the machines' ability to handle uh, uh, to handle uh, a, a, a much broader you know, uh, scope of uh, of uh, reference, okay? including perhaps even longer term memory, uh, what I call the context in my talk. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, uh, in order to be able to communicate with a uh, machine freely as if we are talking to a person, uh, the, the issue of context involves actually more than just words. Okay? So uh, hopefully um, uh, this broader sense of context in terms of, you know, Intermediate to longer term you know, uh, 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 knowledge and the shorter term reference. Okay, uh, this very wide range of handling of this uh, uh, general sense of context that I think is going to happen in the next ten years, and, and people will have to invent uh, new ways to, uh, for example, you know, recognize the context aside from just a few words and how uh, you know, and then develop techniques to handle this general sense of context in the dialogue. So, so that I think is going to happen and we still have a long way to go. Yeah, yeah thank you. And uh, professors, uh, it happens to some PhD students who come to the lab early in the morning and they go home late, but they do not get very much work done. Uh, could you please give some suggestions to the PhD students? on how to combine successful research with their 
free time? All right, you know, this is a tough question. Uh, I can only offer you know, a couple of points here. Okay? One is, um, all right, don't treat research mm -hmm. like a homework. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I think there is a tendency that, uh, uh, you know, for students to uh, think of uh, schoolwork as uh, homework. You know, you are given a problem and you solve it and you turn in your homework. No. Uh, that is not enough uh, for uh, building up uh, your uh, research career. A very important mindset uh, when it comes to research is about your technical sensitivity. Technical sensitivity means that when you are exposed to a subject, technical subject, okay? Now, you must be sensitive to, say, all the dimensions of the subject. And when you are taught of a technique to solve some problem, immediately you need to ask yourself, what is the meaning or significance of this problem in its relative position? Like, you know, when I solve this problem, what are the problems before? And what are the problems that can be induced afterwards? All right, so don't just, you know, focus on the current problem or solution. You must know where did this problem come from? And in its sort of long-term position, what does this problem position itself in the advance of science and engineering? Okay, that is important. Don't just uh, uh, look at you know one technique as one isolated topic. Okay? You need to be able to relate that to other problems, and through that you cultivate your own sensitivity, meaning that now when I when you hear one paper yes. uh, or one advance, then you can immediately assess the meaning, the, the significance of this particular uh, result to present by some other people, right? Yeah. And you know, oh, that advances this particular subject in a major way. But then immediately because of your accumulated sensitivity, you know, oh, but then what might be the next problem? Now that I have here the solution, yeah. that is where you are going to have the maximum gain because then you are able to find the most relevant problems and significant problems that can take advantage of the advances that are offered by other people. All right. This is the way science get you know, uh, 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 the necessary advances, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you want to, if any students want to succeed, that is a very important point, meaning being able to uh, assess the significance of any particular technique or solution or problem and, and know where this problem and the solution stand in the line of development. So that is uh, what I meant by building up your own uh, technical sensitivity yeah. and, and, and don't treat uh, research work as a homework assignment. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. And uh, 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 what kinds of characters do you think are very important to a young scientist who has a dream to be an expert in their research field? Okay. Uh, research is a, uh, is not like I said. It's not a like a job, you know, nine to five job. Okay, uh, the teacher assigned me to this, yes. and I just do my work. Uh, if you want to succeed, yeah. research it has to be part of your life. Meaningless, you know, timeless. It's not just a nine to five. In fact, you know. Uh, Once you are able to cultivate your own technical sensitivity, you will realize, you will know that almost in, in any minute, okay, when you hear something that is technically related and that is of interest to you, immediately without any uh, 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 particular you know, a struggle, uh, you, know, you will think of something that, hey, that is interesting and what will be next. Those uh, images would uh, automatically come into your mind, okay? yes. and so again, so the 
if you want if you want to pursue research as a career, uh, it is important that it becomes part of your blood, okay? yeah. and you maintain you know constantly your uh, uh, enthusiasm towards seeking new advances. And like I said, uh, if you don't treat it as an assigned job and it's become part of your own, you know, uh, 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 blood, part of you, okay, yeah. everything comes automatic. Again, when you talk to anyone, you speak of some advance uh, in some field, you immediately would sense, oh, this problem is solved. Naturally, what might be the next problem, and so on and so forth, and how you can also make contributions. That will come very naturally. Once you get that sense, I think you are in for a long uh, research career and you will definitely succeed. Uh, if you stay with this assignment mindset, then it will be very difficult because you are given assignment, if you cannot you know, solve this problem, you get frustrated because it's not part of you, you are not really meant, you know, you, you don't really mean to uh, 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 solve the problem because it's just, you know, you're, given, you're given the problem simply because you know, that's part of your job. Well, then it would be very difficult. So again, you need to cultivate in yourself this uh, uh, lifelong you know, approach towards uh, research as a as part of your career. Yeah, All thank right. you very much. Thank okay. you, Professor, for sharing your uh, very long experience with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.